Hi and welcome back to another one of my daily sky practices. A lot of people have said how much they are enjoying um, trying to paint one sky a day or at least um, you know, painting fairly often if you can't get time to paint during um, every day. But I just wanted to show that um, it really doesn't a actually have to take very, very long because once you get into your skies and really get used to the way the paint flows, um, you can create a beautiful sky in less than five minutes. And that's what I'm going to try to do here. Um, I'm going to paint a rainstorm. I've got Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees. Now the angle's important because I'm going to ex be really exploiting that to um, paint a wet in wet um, rainy sky. Just very fast, very loose and um, very, very simple. Um, I've wet my sky all over. First of all, I've put some raw sienna and I want a hint of blue sky. So across the horizon line, that's some cerulean blue. I'm using my large Chinese bamboo haki brush for this. And now here's the storm. This is Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber and Indigo. And I'm filling that top um, left corner with really dark paint then dipping into the water and I'm going to add water across the top and allow that dark paint to flow which is why my board is at 45 degrees um, so I can get a really nice flow of paint. Now this isn't quite as easy as it looks, um, it takes a bit of practice and confidence to be able to judge when to turn your board around like that so that you don't completely cover um, the blue and the raw sienna. Um, of the sky. I'm just going to bring that cerulean blue across the horizon line a little bit more. By turning my board like this I've stopped it all from running down and now it's running horizontally and when I'm happy that it's sort of stabilized a, a, a bit I'll turn it back round again and soon you'll see my my rainstorm starting to run down and it's it's just the paint running down the wet page that will give me that storm. Now while that storm is um, painting itself on the page I can quickly tidy up my horizon line. And then I'll take the brush again. Um, I haven't added any more paint to my large bamboo haki brush and I'll sweep it across fairly carefully, aiming for some hit and miss dry brush, but keeping it nice and flat across the horizon. Now that's fine. Um, it's a sky practice, so I'm not looking for anything in particular here. Um, I'm just letting the paint go on, I'm using these long horizontal brush strokes for the land and I'm allowing gravity to bring the paint in the sky um, down vertically and that gives me my contrast. So this is a very, very simple sky. Um, now it's looking the way I want it to look. Um, I'm going to lay my board flat and I'm hoping that it'll dry more or less like this. It will dry a bit lighter, but let's hope I can still keep those lovely um, distant marks of rain. So I'll see you back once it's dry. So here it is. I've allowed it to dry naturally. I don't have a hairdryer, so I always just leave my paintings to dry between stages. I think it's taught me to have patience. Um, and I really like the way it's turned out. It's just a sky and it's very, very simple, but this sort of thing's really good practice. Um, I'm gonna take off the masking tape, just ordinary decorator's masking tape, and um, you can see it looks quite interesting. Um, the masking tape just there leaked a little bit. I didn't stick it down um, quite as well as I should have done, but I'm really, really pleased with the way it's turned out. 
Um, something like this really is a case of less is more and knowing when to stop. As soon as your sky looks okay and natural and very clean, um, even if you're using lots of dark paint, that's when to stop. Because if you go in and try and sort of improve it or change it, that's when you can fiddle and end up with mud or unsightly marks, that sort of thing. Um, so I love that, those diff all those different colours in the top left corner there and the way that gravity has just given us that beautiful rainstorm. With something like this, um, you could go on and you could add mountains, distant hills, um, some land, a village. Um, you could turn this lower area into a sea if you wanted to. You could put in headlands. I think it would look lovely with a sort of a beach across the front and it'd be very easy just to paint one now over the top of that but I'm going to leave this as it is um, and I might paint something on it later but this is just to kind of demonstrate to you that it doesn't have to take long to paint a sky um, once you get used to um, manipulating the paint going with the flow and knowing when to stop stand back and let it dry um, then you can create beautiful skies um, in a very short period of time. And if, like me, you can find somewhere in your home for a dedicated painting space, even if it's just a very small corner, then if you've got your painting stuff set up permanently, as soon as you get a spare five minutes, you can just dash over to that corner and do a sky practice. Well, I hope that super fast sky practice was useful for you. Um, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and um, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified every time I post, which is two or three times a week. Um, thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.